uh, our uh, other members of our senior staff are literally on there. They're in flight. Uh, Joshua and Olga. Joshua is our executive director. Olga is our both our board member, one of our board members, and also uh, the leader of our uh, speakers bureau. Uh, they have been in South Africa for, for the past few weeks for many, many different things, uh, uh, among others. First and foremost, the blessed occasion of Reverend Dr. Kenneth Mishway's, uh wedding. He was married to his new bride on two days ago, almost three days ago now in South Africa. So blessings on Reverend Mishwe. Appreciate you so much, sir. Um, Joshua and Olga and our grandsons were all there. They're headed back now. We'll be touching down in London pretty soon, catching that connecting flight to New York. So we thank God for the prayers of the saints and everyone that they're having safe traveling grace. Everything is going well. So again, welcome. I even see Joshua. He's on the plane. He can't see, but he's saying welcome and giving a shout out and everything. But again, great to be with you all. I think he's doing that from Facebook, right? So we are on all of our streaming with the exception of, um, uh, as we said, uh, da -da 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 -da, uh, Clubhouse, uh, already having that brain freeze, everything. Clubhouse, we're not on Clubhouse uh, right now, just for now. Uh, we got to kind of revamp. We haven't been on in a while. We went back and a lot of our, the followers were taken off and it, we don't really know what's going on. It's a newer format. Uh, we want to get back on that. So we will, you know, our staff will kind of look back into that again and do that again. But, and also, okay, so we got a little bit of a different setup here right now. Um, we are, good evening, Pastor Hall. How you doing? Shout out there to the folks out there in the Atlanta area, ma'am. Good to have you. You're already here. Hello, hello. There's a magnum opus that was logged on a while ago. Hello to you. I think they are from Milan, all right? So Milan out there in Europe, great to have you with us from the United States, from Europe, from Africa, from Israel. We Now we know that it's late or well, early morning in Africa and Israel, both in terms of the West to the Central to the East. I believe Central uh, African time is the same as, as uh, Jerusalem, right? Up and down there on the grid there. So um, hello, hello, everyone. So again, welcome here. We are so glad to have you guys with us. So again, we're setting up the studio. It's not completely set up, but our staff, led by my amazing wife, who is Ipsy COO, is kind of setting up our new studio. Um, my apologies already right off the bat. So I checked this out right from the beginning, right? So the camera, you know, for those of you on the IG, you see that it's just on my phone. It's just sitting there. Those of you who are watching everything else, you're watching it from the laptop. Um, the camera is okay. It's an older one, older style. We're kind of upgrading some of our tech. Uh, because I can see on there, there's a little blur. So I apologize for that. Um, I don't know how I can adjust. I'm see if we can adjust closer, further, or something like that. So if it is a little blurry, I want to. I'm, I'm looking at it now, trying to make sure. Right. Um, uh, we had a little uh, kind of run throughs here uh, before. Had some great stuff in the background. Wanted to have my little light on, but I couldn't have the light on because um, it was blurry in the camera. So the camera's kind of on overload. Right. It's kind of older school. So. Uh, we'll kind of upgrade some of our tech here pretty soon uh, to try to get you even a better quality, uh, both sound and video and everything. So hopefully you all can hear me and see me well on today. All right. So Institute for Black Solidarity with Israel. We were formed in 2013 as an organization of black voices that stand with solidarity with Israel and the Jewish people, combat anti-Semitism, racism, strengthen the, both the Black Jewish Africa Israel Alliance, which is millennia old, if you want to count from the Queen of Sheba visited Solomon 3,000 years ago. Oh, or you wanted to talk about it in terms of centuries here uh, in the States in particular, right? Um, for uh, post-slavery or even during slavery, you had those Jewish members of the abolitionist uh, movement and everything sometimes or often you hear so much about negative this and negative that, but we bring you the whole story. We try to bring you the real story and not just in terms of history, although authentic, authentic history is an emphasis of ours, education, teaching, knowledge, very, very, very important. It is power. The word of God says that without knowledge, the people perish. Uh, but on top of that, we built on that knowledge and we try to uh, highlight those uh, powerful synergistic moments and, and existences between the black and the Jewish communities, Israel and Africa. And there's so much to celebrate uh, and so much to be uh, uh, thankful for and everything, even in the midst of the rising anti-Semitism and all of those things. And again, we also do, again, we combat, we, we are in the fight, our fight. When we talk about the black community, not that a black community is a monolith at all, right? Uh, there is no one black voice. It's like there's no one Jewish voice. There's no one European voice. None of those things. Right. But we are voices within the black community. And especially uh, in the times like now. Right. This is um, 
Oh boy, it, it, these these are difficult times. So it's Purim. It just the end of Purim. Purim is the uh, the uh, holiday of when the Jewish people remember uh, God's deliverance from Haman uh, and the enemies of Israel during the Persian in the Persian Empire centuries ago. Uh, it's a great celebration and a reminder to the Jewish people that no matter what types of plans and plots are made against them. As the word of God says in Isaiah 54, and as Fred Hammond so eloquently wrote some 30 years ago, that's how I'm dating myself, back from Pages of Life, no weapon formed against Israel shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against her in condemnation, she shall condemn. I heard even anti-Semites trying to use that scripture against Israel. It's like, wow, God literally wrote that about Israel. But we're going to get into that a little bit some more as well. So again, you can check us out at ibsi.org, ibsi.org. If this is your first time checking out our forum, welcome. If you are regulars here, welcome. Again, show your ping your friends, ping your neighbors, share your link. Whether you're on YouTube, you're on Instagram, whether you are on Facebook, whether you're on, uh, did I say LinkedIn already? LinkedIn, Twitter. Uh, make sure that you share and let everyone know. Uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in. We try to uh, uh, make this forum available for information sharing, uh, announcements, uh, different events that we're having and everything, letting you know what's going on in the whole world of Black Jewish Synergy and Africa-Israel Alliance. Again, there's so much that's happening. The hour goes by so fast. Even though I talk fast, we try to get in as much as we possibly can. So next week, you may be hearing from Joshua and our Olga together uh, uh, as we're setting up the studio and their, 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 their locations as well, all right? So you can go to our website, you can go to our Substack as well. If you go to ibsi.org, scroll down and you go to Africa Israel Weekly, or you can go to ibsi.substack.com. There our writings are there. We thought we'd have one up on today, probably a little bit later on today. There may be two this week, right? Our articles are there. Every once in a while, there may be a video or the announcement of a video. Um, so we'll, we'll probably point to a couple of those on today. Uh, about those articles. So a couple of them are coming out. Probably will be one about Candace Owens, which we'll come into that in a moment. And I'll tell you why as well. We don't just talk about people. We're not we're trying to just deal with people. We're trying to deal with actual principles and what's going on, right? Uh, and then also there is one that will be coming up this week. I made that announcement last week that discusses, uh, I'll be writing this one about uh, Israel, I mean, IPSI, IPSI, and the mainstream media. Over the past several months since October the 7th, several mainstream media outlets reached out to IBSI to get our comments on the Israel-Gaza war, you know, what our take was, especially after you had this whole thing where black pastors were featured in the New York Times. Um, they were progressive pastors and they were talking about the election season and they were calling for ceasefire and everything. And so several of the outlets reached out to us gave us lengthy interviews and never wrote anything, right? So we're not going to be naming those outlets. We're not going to be naming the people, but we are going to be explaining what happened. So that's going to be kind of pretty soon. What happened and why, how they didn't like our answers and what they did. And they debated with us, right? It became, it wasn't an interview situation. It became a debate, right? And, you know, instead of them just writing down what they said, even if you're going to do a hit piece, do a hit piece, right? But no, they just, they didn't like what we said and they want to argue with us and about facts and stuff. They All their facts were wrong, right? And then they just didn't report. So, one of the reasons why we'll be writing the article, two reasons. Number one, <clears throat> to let you know that um, in terms of the mainstream press, when it's when it as is definitely affirming Israel, it definitely gets that scrutiny. And then number two, when people say, well, where are the black people and the black voices? Well, this is going to be an example. Example, exhibit A, they invite, they, they, they reached out to us. We didn't reach out to them. They interviewed us. And then they chose not to say anything. They, they're they voicing everything. They'll, there's Hamas, right? The ministry, Gaza Ministry of Health is Hamas. Boom, front page, New York Times. And they'll talk about black pastors who are, you know, they want to cease fire and they're condemning Israel or whatever the thing is. And everybody has the right to have their opinion, right? But when they reached out to a black organization, they didn't like what it said, didn't print it, right? So you didn't hear about it, right? So we're going to actually talk about that. And I want to say that right off the bat. And I'll say it again when we get to that piece. Later on, we'll, we'll release the piece. You might be talking about it next week. We're not writing the piece to complain, right? It's not, oh, poor is, woe is us, and they don't treat us fair. No, no, no. We're just letting you know what's happening so that you're informed. It doesn't stop us from doing the work that we're going to do, right? Uh, it makes it, it, it would be nice if the, the word was out in some of the other uh, uh, sites or whatever like that or, or, or 
or, or um, press people, whatever. My brain's not working right now, so they could read it, right? Whatever, whatever the uh, periodicals are. We used to call them periodicals back in the day, but you know, different papers and magazines or whatever. But again, it doesn't stop what we're doing. So we're just letting you know how it happened. And that is a pretty regularly occurring thing. And it's both racial and it's political. Political in that if it leans left, the mainstream press will go with it. And again, it's not just race. This is now this politics. I remember Khalid Abu Tuami, Arab Israeli journalist, had shared with us years ago. But when he was working as a young journalist, as an Arab journalist there in Israel, and he was actually reporting with part of the core of the PLO, they were cool with him, right? Or if he said something negative about Israel, cool about, you know, or whatever, whatever, not even so much negative, but if it, it put Israel in a bad light, boom, right? But when he just reported on what was going on about if it put the PLO in a bad light, if it put, you know, Hamas, they don't want to hear about that and his phone stopped ringing, right? So that's how that goes, all right? So someone said they care about narrative and not facts. Absolutely. Long ago, ladies and gentlemen, decades ago, Israel was taken, if it ever had the sympathy of those on the left politically, it was removed. This is a long time ago, right? Now, don't get me wrong. There's plenty of Jew hatred on the right. We're going to get into that in a minute. So, so don't think what I'm saying on the left, I'm acting like they don't exist. I'm just saying the right doesn't control the mainstream media. The right doesn't control the entertainment industry, right? So that, so that flood of stuff where you're a good social justice warrior, if you're pro-Palestinian, that comes from the left and the left kind of controlling those mediums, including college campuses, including you know high school campuses and everything. This is why these kids... Many of them so rapidly anti-Israel. And once again, I've said it a million times, couldn't find Gaza on a map, but they're invested in this free, free Palestine, not even understanding what that means, right? What that even means for the Palestinian people, all right? So again, that's coming up uh, later on. So let's see here. I want to, then we said, uh, duh, 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 we might get to the Iran part with South Africa. And yep, I said that part. I actually said number four last. And, duh, 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 all right, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's do this. Um, this, I, 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 we need to, we meaning IBSI, don't want to, really don't want to, <laughs> but we have to address the Candace Owens, Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro situation in a specific vein. And when I say I don't know why, don't, don't want to, I, about two weeks ago, last week, was it? Every third Tuesday, the Institute for Black Solidarity of Israel does something called the Ibsi Pastors Presents. And it is where we have a private situation, I mean, private meaning church leaders, uh, pastors, bishops, and others. It doesn't have to be, they don't have to be Christian, right? They can actually sign up on the link. You can go to ibsi.org right now, go to dates, and you'll see the next one, the third Tuesday in April is April the 16th. And we'll be specifically dealing with the Candace Owens, Kanye West, Christian, the a the the new era of Christian anti-Semitism, which is what I'll get ready to comment on right now. Right? The point is not Candace, the point is not Kanye, heck, the point is not Nick Fuentes, right? The last event that we did, which was the third Tuesday of March this month, last week, was about Louis Farrakhan. And we we focused on the Savior's Day speech. And let me pause here, make sure. I hope you got, you know, okay, I guess it's kind of shaking a little bit. For those of you watching, my apologies. I touched something else and I saw it kind of moving. So I'm not trying to give you seasick and stuff like that. Let me try to, I move around a lot. So let me be careful. We're, we're still setting up the studio, right? It's, it's, it's not there yet, but we're still setting it up. Um, there was, um, we, we, we focused on Louis Farrakhan's Savior's Day speech. Jay Cohen, greetings to you. Hey, Jay, how you doing? Jay Cohen. Uh, man out there in South Africa, we still have not met face to face. When I'm out there one more time, Jay, we got to meet. How you doing? Miss Misty Rose, looking forward to your take on this. Right, I'm looking forward to it too. I'm going to see what I'm going to say. Uh, Magnet, I'm joking. I know what I'm going to say. Uh, okay, yeah, here we go. So, yes, yeah, sorry. So, uh, the point of dealing with the Louis Farrakhan speech wasn't to focus on Louis Farrakhan or the Nation of Islam, none of those things, right? I, I say this, all the pastors in the house say amen, right? <laughs> when we use examples, when we when there's object lessons, whether we're preaching from a text, right? Or real life examples, maybe our own lives, something positive, something negative or whatever. The point isn't the person. The point is never, even if I'm giving you an anecdote about me, the point is not supposed to be about me. It's the principle that I'm trying to convey, right? 
It would be like Jesus tearing the parable of any parable, right? The parable of the sower. A sower went to sow seeds and he and he threw it on the ground and some of it was on stony ground, some of it was on good ground. The point isn't the, the farmer, the sower, the, none of those things. The point is the, 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 the spiritual principle that Jesus was teaching. He told his disciples, he said, the sower represents the preacher who preaches the word of God. The seed is the word of God. And the different ground represents the people whose heart it falls on, right? Whether it's in this one person's heart who they have these different things going on in their lives or stony heart, it can't penetrate all these types of things, right? Someone, someone said, hey, man, come on, Pastor Hall, you know what I'm saying? So when you're talking about using an example of a person, in this case, we got to do the Candace Owens thing, Ipsy is not trying to bash on Candace Owens. We're not trying to even, I don't agree a lot of what's going on. And some stuff I do agree with, with, with what has been done. I'll, I'll break that down in a moment, right? Louis Farrakhan, the point, no, the point isn't, oh, how evil he is. with this evil, evil man. No, we're, we're saying, here's what he's saying. Here's why it is unhealthy. Here's what's untrue. And pastors, heads up, this is what we're encouraging you to be careful about, right? That's what we're doing. Our point isn't, you know, oh, you know, go, go get these people and these people and these people, and uh -uh, right? Because one of the reasons why Paul tells us in the word that when we're preaching, we're to be careful, right? Because we have to be aware of ourselves. So, Ipsy, even when we're bringing you information that's something that might be, you know, not that, you know, great, like I'm getting ready to now, I'm saying all this for a reason, I'm setting it up. The, the 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 point isn't that person any more than we think we're perfect. Oh, Candace Owen said this, and we're like this. So look at the no, 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 no. What do we got? And I've got to preach. All we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Right. This is not about even when Christians are holding other Christians accountable, which the Word of God says we're supposed to do prayerfully and in love, that type of thing, or we're at least supposed to share. And by their fruits you shall know them. We're supposed to do that with the spirit of humility, knowing that we are no more perfect than the person that we are discussing. We're actually discussing the principles so that they are aware. So, that having been said. There's a very dangerous thing that has been, this is not a new thing. It's been going on for a minute. I said this <clears throat> back in the fall of 2022. I said this to members of our congregation in our prayer time together. <clears throat> I said this to my family and others. And, and I and we wrote about it a little bit, not a whole lot. As a matter of fact, Ipsy's only made a couple of official statements regarding Candace Owens, Kanye, that whole thing that's been kind of unfolding since around the fall of 2022. And meaning... When Kanye West, uh, who's this very complicated figure, I don't know him personally, right? But, you know, he, one of the most prolific hip hop artists of all time. The man is a genius. I mean, he's, he's made his mark in the hip hop world in terms of fashion and everything, right? So very, very capable. Um, and so uh, nothing but props for all the stuff that he's been able to do. That's amazing, right? But unfortunately, like anybody else, Part of his flaws, his flaws are manifested in this whole anti-Israel thing, right? The sun that rises and the set on the just, right? Sun, sun rises and falls on the just and the unjust. Amen. That's what I'm talking about, Pastor. Kanye went there. You know, I'm going DEFCON 3 on the Jews. He he was taking, without getting onto the whole thing from before, those of you who already know it, but now you just Google it, Kanye West, Jews, Nazi, all the other kind of stuff. He, you know, I'm going DEFCON 3 on the Jews. The Jews have done this to me. The Jews have done that to me. Not saying these specific things have happened to me, right? But he goes after an ethnicity, after religion, the Jews, the Jews, the Jews, right? And I've said it a million times. It'd be like somebody who was not black saying the blacks, the blacks, the blacks, the Negroes, the Negroes, the Negroes, right? Not I had some bad situations with these people. No, just them people, right? That, that's, that'd be a racist, right? That'd be somebody who has a problem with black people, not some specific people who did something to him. And Kanye talking about the Jews, the Jews, the Jews, the Jews, the Jews, right? Kanye and Candace are friends and she, you know, she's cool with all of it, right? So, you know, what do you got to say about that? No, Kanye, we entitled to his opinion. You can say, well, okay, whatever, right? We talked about it back starting from the fall of 2022. And when we finally wrote, you can go to ibsi.org, go to ibsi.org, go to Ipsy, to the Africa Israel Weekly, right? Or ibsi.substack.com. And you can see our, our official statement regarding Kanye West and his uh, and his anti-Semitic statements. They're just clearly anti-Semitic statements. And he followed all that up by um, Hitler was a great man. Uh, the Nazis weren't that bad. That whole thing, right? Just, just clearly the man has, for whatever his reasons are, problems with Jews, right? That's, that's a, he's a classic anti-Semite, right? Right. So Candace, as we said in the article, 
seem to co-sign on something that Kanye did that way. And I've said this many times. You have to read the article. If you find the one that it says Ipsy's official statement on Kanye West, if you go to Substack, scroll down and you'll find Ipsy's official statement on Kanye West. And you'll read, I won't go through all over here just in terms of interest of time, right? So that was the first time we publicly called out Kanye and Candace for what was clearly this Jewish bias, right? Candace was more of a, we saw, it was like a, um, like a co-signing type of figure. Kanye was saying some stuff and she was kind of backing him up, right? And the stuff was that he was saying was seem whack and, and just not just anti-Semitic, but just also just making up stuff about what somebody did to him. And Candace seemed to kind of co-sign on that. We said that before, right? That's my point. Fast forward to just a little while ago, she was released by, da released by Daily Wire, which was founded by Orthodox Jewish uh, man, uh, Ben Shapiro. They had very public spats on the thing. And let me say again, Ipsy has never, and we will not, we never weighed in on their arguments with each other, right? She was saying stuff that was kind of out of line. He was saying stuff that, in our opinion, can I say it right here between you and me? I felt that they should have settled it as grown folks in a room somewhere, right? She, you know, was kind of doing some passive aggressive stuff on Twitter, and then he responded to it, right? I mean, I would have done it that way. But again, everybody's got to do what they got to do. We never ended. We didn't weigh in on their argument, what was going on between the two. No, nah, that's not our business. That's not what we do. I didn't do it personally. Ipsy didn't do it. We addressed Candace Owens' anti-Semitic stuff or anti-Israel stuff, right? We've done it before. She claimed and she and Charlie Kirk claimed that Israel was bombing Christians in Gaza. And that was not the case at all. That was propaganda, whether they were doing it intentionally or unintentionally. We had to set that record straight. We dealt with that type of stuff, right? And then Candace, stuff like uh, Olga mentioned it before. Uh, uh, what's the young lady's name? Um, who's the uh, comedian, Maria? Um, and the actress, uh, Baby Doll, who went to vi visit Israel. Miss Producer, you remember that for me? I'm, I'm blanking out on names again. Somebody help me. Um, y'all know who I'm talking about. The lady who just went to Israel, African American. She's Jewish. Um, she went. She went. Uh oh, if somebody said something, I missed you. Um, anyway, she she went to Israel. Um, uh, Tiffany Haddish. Thank you. Somebody somebody got brothers back. Come on, y'all. Don't leave me hanging. So thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. So she went to Israel, right? She gets on Instagram on her plane. Hey, I'm going to Israel. And Candace goes on her show the next day, rips her. Ah, I'm going to Israel. It's a war. That's so stupid. That's ridiculous. Like, okay, why are you all in her business, right? Why, why you got this? So this is after multiple times about Israel stuff and Jewish stuff, right? You can't, are you paying for Tiffany's way, right? Are you, does she owe you money, right? Why are you all in her business, right? And it was just a pattern of all this anti-Jewish stuff, right? On oh, Israel, and we're, we're not going to, I don't want to support genocide of anyone, right? What are you trying to say, right? That's your little... Passive aggressive way of saying that you're accusing Israel of genocide against Palestinians, that kind of stuff, right? So all that stuff's going on, right? So we're calling that stuff out, not every single time, but we're dealing with it like we would deal with Louis Farrakhan, Nick Fuentes, or anybody else, right? So we're dealing with this when we feel that it's appropriate, especially if it's coming from a member of the black community. You following me? Yes, that's what we're dealing with. So in one of the spats between Candace and Ben Shapiro, and again, for those of you pastors out there who want to be a part of it, we're going to break this down scripturally and everything on April the 16th, Tuesday, April the 16th. It's actually entitled, Maria, do we have a graphic there? The title of it, April 16th, for those of you who would like to join us there. Uh, if we don't have the graphic, it's okay. It's actually entitled, if I can see my title here. Uh, I had my time. Oh, wow. It logged me off of there. But it's a long title. You'll see it on there. But basically, it's talking about the new wave of Christian anti-Semitism. And this is why I'm saying all this to say these things here. Among the anti-Jewish, anti-Israel, you can say, and yes, let me pause, 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 pause. Yes. The term anti-Semite and anti-Semitism has been overly used as a weapon so much to the point that it hardly means anything anymore because of how people, unfortunately, Jewish and non-Jewish have played with that term. They've used it as a weapon to attack anybody that they don't like so that anything just like the term racist, it has been used so much that even when something is racist, some people are very cynical because they keep hearing it. Everybody's racist. Everybody's is anti-Semitic, everybody is Islamophobe, everybody's misogynistic, yada, 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 right? That's what happens in a society in which words don't mean anything. I, mean, I told you before, all that have what is a woman stuff, right? Oh, you're right wings. No, no, no. 
we're talking about language. When words no longer mean anything, you can't define things like justice and right and wrong. Everything becomes malleable, right? And that becomes very, very dangerous, right? So anti-Semite, which was a word that was coined by somebody else who wasn't even it, Jew hatred, right? People will use those types of terms all the time, and that's a very bad thing, right? Because when a person is a straight-up Jew hater or anti-Semite, or at the very least has extreme bias against other ethnicities or religions, it becomes difficult to then qualify in a in a in a atmosphere in which those terms are used all the time. So we're not trying to use that lightly. Candace using her platform to not even set records straight, say stuff about Israel, imply stuff about Jews, right? And all this, so it's been going on for a good minute, right? And again, the receipts are all there, right? We we have, we have did an article, we're gonna do another one, but there's other things that we've actually shared as well, right? So anyway, on top of that, Christ is king, right? So now, that's something that, I mean, Kanye's album that he did is a gospel album or a religious album a couple of years ago, Jesus is Lord. We shared some of it. I mean, not Ipsy, but I shared listen some of it and everything, and some nice tunes on there and everything like that. I'm encouraging the brother Christian, all right, go forward and everything. And then he just kind of went on his thing again, right? So we're just praying for him, right? But just the hatred, all that stuff, the Israel, the Jewish, the Nazis, all that kind of stuff, right? We called it out, right? Called it out. Excuse me. Sorry. Christ is king is trending, not because it's Holy Week for Christians. Right. It was Palm Sunday yesterday. They're going up to Easter this week. Not because Jesus is Lord. Right. And let me pause. Now, let me break this down. I'm talking to the Christians in the house. Our Lord and Savior and soon coming King. Ride on King Jesus. No man going to hinder me. Don't make me start singing. Right. King of kings, Lord of lords. Christians, real Christians, believe that he is our Lord and Savior, soon coming king. I am a Christian pastor. Believe that with all my heart. Have wonderful relationship with my Jewish brothers and sisters. I don't try to force them to believe anything. They don't try to force me to be something else. We respect who we are. I share the gospel with everyone. We preach and we teach and all of those things. That nothing in any of our dealings with Israel, our Jewish brothers and sisters, has in any way changed our opinion and our belief that Jesus is the Messiah. Full stop, right? Me using that as a weapon against Jews is not only reprehensible, it blasphemes the scriptures. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Goodness gracious. See, so Candace has been using that term as far as she's concerned to defend Christianity. Another full stop. Are Christians disrespected in the United States in terms of a regularly secular society? Absolutely. Are Jews disrespected as a religion? I know there are people as religion in a secular society. Absolutely, right? And for when it comes to Islam, which is this thing, right? You have the, the unfortunate thing in which the dominant thing on the media is like people like CARE, which represents Hamas, CARE, the Council of uh, uh, Amer Arab Islamic Relations. I hope I'm saying it right. Um, and a lot of that Islamist leaning type of stuff covering for Hamas, unfortunately, for Muslims who just want to live in peace, they got to deal with that drama as well, right? The duty jassers and the other ones that are out there who love America, who love freedom, cool with Israel and everything, and don't like all this Islamist stuff going on, right? So unfortunately, we live, America, thank you, I'm the Council of American Islamic Relations, thank you. Unfortunately, in our very hyper-secular, anti-God, uh, now demonic worshiping society that we're living in, right? See all these goat demons and all kinds of, none of that's happenstance, ladies and gentlemen. We are a society that is collectively a very, very sick people, right? Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. We, we as a society, I'm not talking about people as individuals, I'm talking about as a society, man, right? So very anti-Christian people who have Christian or what we would call conservative leaning values, pro-life, pro, -life, pro uh, um uh, uh, family in terms of nuclear family, mother and father, right? Th those people who espouse those things, not attacking anybody, and they say, here's what I believe. Here's what the word of God says. Those people not just attacked. We talked about before during the whole, and this is still going on. Pause. The, what am I trying to say? 
the uh, the Roe v. Wade controversy, the Supreme Court sends the decisions back to the states. I don't care what your position is on. I'm not getting into pro-life and pro-choice. That's not my point, right? Those that were pro-life, right, who were going to, you know, vigils and all those types of things, these people, some of their houses being raided, these people being targeted by the Justice Department. If you're saying you're in the pro-life, it's true. I know some of the people who've been impacted by it. We work with some of the organizations who've let us know. We see have all the receipts. That's what's going on. So this is true. So when a Candace Owens talks about that type of thing happening against Christians in this society, it's true. No, we're not going through a persecution like our brothers and sisters in Nigeria and Sudan and all that kind of stuff. But there is this bias against religious people, whether they're Jews, whether they're Christians, and oftentimes whether they're Muslims. This is true, and it's getting worse and worse and worse. But using Christ is king in an argument with your Orthodox Jewish at that time boss does not mean you are extolling the fact that Jesus is Lord. You're using it as a weapon and even tried to deny it. Maria, I don't know if you have it on there. You can share it if you want to. Um, if you have it, you can show that tweet. Um, if we don't, yeah. So one of the things Candace was saying earlier today, so oh, people are trying to say I'm using it for blah, 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 blah. Candace gets up on her Twitter. This is several months ago, back in November, because she's not to say anything in November. You see the date, November 15th, right? Back in November, she quoted this whole thing about, you know, you can't serve God and, man, and mammon. You know, you're going to, this whole scripture when Jesus talks about you have to choose your loyalties, right? Well, Ben took that as something that was directed at him, and it probably was Daily Wire, right? She doesn't name Daily Wire. But by this point, the spat had already gotten pretty heated, right? Online, right? We're not even talking about something that we, we, tap somebody's phone, these folks are doing it online, right? I mean, at least at this point, Ben, he, he responds to it, right? Again, we didn't get into their spat. We addressed this part here. She says, you are utterly out of line for suggesting that I cannot uh, quote biblical scripture. The Bible is not about you. Now, Ben, in fairness to him, didn't say anything about her quote in scripture. He said, basically, hey, based on this whole, you can't serve God and money and the other side and the other. He said, hey, look, if you, if you feel like taking uh, money from the Daily Wire, comes between you and God, quit, right? Now, again, I wouldn't have done it like that online, but hey, whatever, right? So he says this to her, and she then tweet quotes him and says he's out of line for saying she can't quote scripture. If you look at the text, that's it. we've been commenting, he didn't say that. He didn't say stop quoting the Bible. How do you quote the Bible? He said, if you don't like working for Daily Wire, quit, right? Makes sense. Then she says, right after that, Christ is king. Come on now, unless you're going to play stupid. She's not saying... Jesus is Lord in some sort of pious religious sense. She's saying it at Ben Shapiro. So Christ is King is trending because after it was announced that Candace and Daily Wire are going the separate ways, right? Jeremy Boreen, I guess, is the guy he gets on there, says it. Candace says, I'm free at last and the whole thing and whatever, right? We didn't comment on none of that, right? That's the business thing, right? These, these folks handling grown folks business right whatever right she don't work with them no more she gonna do whatever she's gonna do we didn't touch none, none of that was an issue for us right and then the whole christ is king starts trending on these feeds by people who are picking a side candace but often on those accounts many of them rabid jew haters i mean big time anti-semites you have muslims there's one young man i can't remember his name uh, he and he was tweet quoted by somebody else talking about Jesus, Lord, Christ is King. He does, he's not even a Christian, right? He's not saying it because Jesus is Lord, right? And then Andrew Tate, who's also a Muslim, he just, who, yeah, I'm glad to see the Christians stand up for themselves. Christ is King, right? Ladies and gentlemen, that is almost tantamount for us as Christians taking the Lord's name in vain. This is not a game. Someone said she also defended Andrew Tate. Yeah, and I, even when she did that, we didn't touch any of that stuff as well. We see who Andrew Tate is, all that kind of stuff. We, whatever, right? We 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 stay in our lane, right? We do agree with him. No, we don't, right? But you know, we just we try to stay focused, right? You know, it, we we got enough on our plate. So Christ is King is a mockery. Ha! Let me talk to the Christians for a moment. Again, y'all Christians in the house, say man. And, and if, if you're not Christian, you you, you cool. You, you ain't got to go nowhere. We, 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 we all love. It's all love. Acts chapter 15, and I'm not going to turn to it because we're going to deal with it when we get to April. God save the same. 
There is a story in the scriptures in which Paul, I believe, and Silas, in Acts chapter 16, or is it 15? I think it's chapter 16, 16. And there's three verses in which it talks about a servant girl who's actually a medium. She, she's a spiritualist or, or she can, she can uh, hear in the spirit realm, right? Now, pause. I'm not calling Candace that at all. I'm, I told you before, I gave you that whole spiel. Even when we're dealing with a Candy, Kanye, a Candace, or Louis, uh, Louis Farrakhan, I mean, it's not about them, it's about the principle. I'm breaking down the principle. The word of God says that when Paul and Silas, this is when they were first arrested, they were preaching the gospel in a town. And this particular young girl, who not only was she a medium, not only did she like speak to the spirit world and everything, they would charge money. So she was like traded on almost on a stock market type. She was a slave, but different people own different parts of her vocation. So she would charge money or they would charge money to come and come to this girl and she would tell their fortunes and all the kind of stuff, right? And so this is who she was. So they came to the town to preach, uh, Paul and Silas, I believe it is. And for several days in a row, here's my point, she followed them around and she simply said two things. These are the men of the most high God. That's number one. Number two, who've come to show the way of salvation. End quote. I'm going to say it again. She, this woman, woman with this familiar spirit, who would they would call her a medium? Or, or, I don't call it a witch is a technical term, but she was a one who who would talk with different spirits, right? She could talk and interpret. Young girl, she had this gift, and they exploited the gift, and it was a gift that was not from the source of God. It was a it was used in the occultic way. You with me? All right. She would follow them around. Someone said, Pastor, I'll say, check that spirit. Yes, he did, and he she would follow them down day after day. Now the point of it is that. Paul, the apostle, when he got tired of hearing it, turned around and said to the spirit, not to the girl, you foul spirit come out of her. And boom, the word of God says it came out of that very hour. Again, this is Acts chapter 16. Why would Paul rebuke a spirit, whether it was a, or a human being, for saying what was true? The spirit that was speaking speaking through the girl did not lie. These were the men of the most high God, and they had come to preach the way of salvation. They were the men of the most high God, and they come to show the people how to get saved. This was true. But the spirit that was being employed, the spirit, the way it was being said was mocking. It was not an exhortation or an exaltation. It was not glorifying God. It was not edifying anybody. It was said to jeer. You know what I mean? Watch this. It would be like somebody following you around who didn't like you, but knew you were of good character. Let me pick a person's name. Oh, I don't want to say Pastor Hall. I don't just pick, you know, well, pa Pastor Hall, I see her name more clearly on there. Like, uh, Pastor Hall, you are a woman of God. Pastor Hall, you show sure enough a woman of God. Pastor Hall, you're a woman. Of, and they followed you around every day. Now, what they're saying is true. Pastor Matrilla Hall is a woman of God. But the spirit in which it's being said is not exhorting or encouraging her. It's to mock her. Pastor Hall, once she got her full of it, would rebuke the spirit. What's my point? Christ is king often on this social media is not being said to glorify Jesus. It's being said to mock Jews. It's being said as an anti-Semitic. And this is why people are going, people, folks, whether they're doing it intentionally, either they're either dumb or playing dumb. They're saying, why? Christians, 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 right? Yeah. Why is that bad? If Christ is king. We need to glory. Hallelujah. Oh, the Christ is king. Christ is that. Why? That's not. That's where people are being all upset. And here's what's really dangerous about this, ladies and gentlemen. Religion is being assaulted in our country. Christians are being attacked 
marginalized, right? Again, we're not talking about like they're enslaved in Sudan, but still are being attacked for their faith. Jews are being attacked for the faith. There's a real spirit alive in our country that is coming against people of faith. So when this game gets played about why they saying Christ's king is bad, when they know, many of them who don't know, they, they should, when they know it's not being said. So when Candace says to Ben Shapiro, how dare you tell me I can't call scripture Christ is king? Come on, people. That's not how she means it. She means it like she said in there. Don't tell me what to do. Christ is king. I gave you a long list of disclaimers before I came here. So if you just now come in here when I'm saying this part, go back and look at the whole thing. I spent time explaining the focus is not on the person. Nobody, all we have seen and show. I gave you all those disclaimers, right? I brought you all those disclaimers to bring you here. Here, Christ is king is trending for all of the wrong reasons. See, someone says she did not say Christ is my king. Big dip. Come on now. Goodness gracious. I know a man from Galilee. If you in sin, he'll set you free. Oh, oh, the saints used to say, do you know him? Right. For yourself. Goodness gracious. Not my mother, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord. Me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I care how eloquent you are. Ah, goodness gracious. Jesus, I, I know we, we, we are we in church now. We might as well still. I wish I had an organ right up in here, right? Jesus tells a story about two men going into the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and one was a sinner, Jesus said, right? And they were both there in the temple, right? And the sinner is pounding his chest and God, forgive me. I'm a sinner. God, forgive me. I'm a sinner. And it said that the Pharisee, not that all the Pharisees are bad. This was just a parable. All my Jewish brothers and sisters, just calm down. It's not an anti-Semitic thing at all, right? No, 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 there's this, right? So the Pharisee, the religious guy, looks at the guy, and his prayer is, God, thank you that I'm not like that man. His prayer was, thank you, God, that I'm sliced bread and I'm better than that dude. And Jesus says, God heard the sinner's prayer not the other person's prayer. What was the point of that parable? The parable was that prayer is good, how it's done. Me saying Jesus is Lord, Christ is King. I, I, don't, I don't care if I'm Jewish, Baruch Hashem, Shabbat Shalom. If I'm saying it in a right way, there's a blessing in that for me. If I'm not, there's not. And if I'm mocking God, oh goodness gracious. That's the danger. So there are a bunch of Christians, some who aren't unaware, so I'll leave them alone, but some who are aware, who have their own problem with Jews, have their own problem, because y'all know Christian anti-Semitism is a thing, right? You, long before there was Muslims and Islamic uh, terrorism against Jews, and all kind of, long before Islam and Muhammad, before even about 100 centuries, Christianity predates Islam by a good, ooh, I don't know, how many years is that again? 1700, you're about, oh yeah, then I'm bad, I don't math very well, about 1300 years, right? You got a millennia or so before Islam even comes on the scene. And long before Islam came on the scene, many folks who call themselves Christians came against the Jewish people. Uh, those of you don't understand, Christians are the many people, Martin Luther, the great reformer, became a rabid anti-Semite who advocated the burning of Torah scrolls, the destruction of synagogues, and the killing of Jews. Yes, he did. That doesn't mean that the other stuff that he did and that he wrote as a reformer wasn't good, right? But unfortunately, the Bible says good and bad comes out of one fountain, right? Yes, absolutely, right? So Christianity, Christian, Christian anti-Semitism is, is a thing. It's making a comeback. I told again our congregation members and some and, and, and told our family and everything that when Kanye went full Hitler when he went full Heil Hitler right someone said seven centuries thank you before and there were still Christians I'm watching it online black white whatever they were all backing oh Kanye Kanye's being Christian they know that's right he can heck he say what he wants to say I mean he's just coming for Jews right the Jews are this and the demonic that and all kind of Hitler was a good person, okay. And they just cheering him on. Christians, right? Yeah, that's right. Kanye, Kanye can save them. Or the Christians who were cheering him on had nothing to say about his anti-Jewish stuff, right? Man, and, and I'm a young, 
I watched it. Black conservatives, some of them are writers, some of them are personalities and everything. I'm, I'm not calling names right now, just not because I'm afraid. I just don't want to get distracted. I did enough of the names thing, right? But I'm saying, we're watching this, right? Watching, well, 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 we, 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 well, you know what he was trying to say? I mean, this man straight up praising Hitler and y'all still got his back. All right, right? Because that's a spirit, right? So the Christ is king is being said in that same vein. So much so that that term is now being tainted for a generation of people, meaning he is king, king of kings and lord of lords. But the way it's being used, father in heaven, right? That's what we were saying, and that's the danger of it. So when Candace shot that back at Ben Shapiro, she wasn't trying to... How do you know what was in her heart? Dude, look at the tweet. Don't put it up on me again. Don't, uh, you know what? I, it, it's Purim, too. And I did this. Can I get a little, uh, just a um, little, little com not commercial break, but man, go ahead. Give me, give me a happy Purim. Give, give me my Ethiopian Israelis out there. Hot, 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 hot. I'm still trying to. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. That's actually the Ethiopian Israeli restaurant out in Tel Aviv. I just saw it pop up on, on Instagram. I said, you know what? We might get a little heavy. So every once in a while, you know what I'm saying? We might do a little happy Purim, you know, Hag Purim Sameach. So some of the Ethiopian Israelis out there posted it on IG. I don't know them personally, right? But they posted it on there. So I thought I would just do that. So I told Mary, have it ready. So that was just, boom, just hit me. So I won't be able to do that. This is very serious. And it is helping to usher in this meaning this Christian anti-Semitism, these lies on Israel, these blanket statements about Jews by Christians, by I love me some Jesus, let me sing some worship song Christians. I said it before, the biblical illiteracy of these generations of American Christians will be the death of us. I will bless those who bless you, Israel. Everyone who comes against you, I'm coming against. I will pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper that love thee. Paul said it in Romans chapter 11. And don't be arrogant because God has able to graft them in again. You don't support the root. The root supports you. The word of God is very clear. There is no replacement theology. We are not the Israel of God. Whoo, boy. You didn't get saved and become a Jew, and God somehow kicked the Jews into the Red Sea somewhere. Nope. Israel is still Israel. And there's been a generation, a couple, I should say, of Christians who either have been told the opposite of that or don't know the biblical mandate and the relationship that God has with Israel and the Jewish people, the people and the land. I'm sorry. I don't care what Iran says. I don't care what Hamas says. I don't care what the United Nations says. I don't care what the Biden administration says. The land was given to Israel by God himself. And if you think that's too preachy for you, find yourself another channel. I will bless those who bless you, Abraham. And here's the other thing. Here's the land in the covenant is the land. Leave your father's house. Leave those gods and go to a land I will show you. You don't like that? That's too bad. So there's a lot of Christians calling themselves Christians who don't understand that. Here's the thing. You want to bless the Jewish people? That's your business. You want to bless Israel? You want to pray for the peace of Jews? Fine. Don't stand with Hamas. Come on, man. Don't be really stupid. It's one thing to not, I'm, I don't believe that Bible stuff. I'm talking about Christians now. I, I, you know, God, God, you know, it's called Palestine. We, we have to unhitch ourselves from, right, okay, so you go unhitch yourself from the word of God. You're already in a lot of trouble, right? That's one thing. But then you'll go switch over on the free, free Palestine. So now you go stand with the PLO, right? So how'd you go from, I'm not dealing with any of this religious stuff, to from the river to the sea? Hamas's charter says that Israel will exist until Islam obliterates it. So you're not cool with the biblical text about God blessing Israel, but you're cool with these Quranic texts quote, quoted by these Islamists who want to destroy Israel. You got to pick, bruh, right? So you're not cool with this in your faith, but you're cool with, right, Christians, Christians, right? Candace Owens represents that. So Christians, let me help you. If you go declare that he's king, Christ is king, Jesus is Lord, you're going to sing, he is Lord, he is Lord. He has risen from the dead and he is Lord. Go ahead and sing it. But man, sing that to God. Sing that to your creed. Don't say it at people. Don't, whoo, let me help you. Let me save you a whole lot of stuff. Don't let your declaration of faith be to your God, your creator. 
Don't try to prove stuff to other people. Trying to get back. Oh, who this? Get go get them. Wait till I give them this. Mm. Don't fall for that. Don't fall for that. That's demonic. Don't play with the word of God. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's slice going and coming. You start using to try to slice and dice people. Guess what, man? Yes. So, yep. That's because I'm a preacher. I'm be talking, and our time is almost. Okay, I got a few more. All right. So anyway, that was the point with the Candace Owens thing. Not about her. It's about what she's doing. And I'm saying to Christians again, don't play with that. Don't be quoting hashtagging Christ is King unless you mean that. Don't be. Don't be. Don't jump into that. And you better know what's going on, man. You better understand. Whoo! You better understand what's happening. Ray, I can't. What was that other thing? I had? Oh yeah. So let me give this real quick. So I want to. Um, I, I. It's not an official announcement, but I do let you know for the past month or so, I'm changing gears here. Uh, look, happy Purim! Come on, Ray. Purim, Ray. Give me some Purim. Can you do that for me, please? Get it first. Get a little. Give me a little celebration. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so now, uh, changing gears real quick for a second. Um, come on, Bible say it'll read you first. Yes, it will. Before you start spitting it out, man, you better digest that thing first, right? So, um, so Institute for Black Solidarity with Israel. Shout out to um, our colleague out there, Miss Star Parker over Urban Cure. I see Zay Zaya. Why do I always see yours pop up like that? I can barely see, but I can see that thing on there. Shout out to Zaya out there. He know who I'm talking about. How you doing, bro? Um, tell Bishop Younger, I said, hey, what's going on? How's he doing? I'm sorry, y'all. Every once in a while, I'll see some, some of the young folks out there, you know, popping up on the screen and everything. Um, Star Parker established an organization, a policy organization called Urban Cure, a cure, I'm sorry. Cure is an acronym for, help me, Maria, because I don't have it in front of me, and my screen disappeared, right? Uh, thank you, Center for Urban Renewal and Education, working to heal distressed communities. She's been doing work in the African-American communities across the country for, for a while now, and uh, love her work and everything. And so um, we are Cure and IBSI, are in conversations now about hosting town halls in certain cities across the country over these next few months. We're going to be starting in Detroit first. So those of you in Detroit, I don't have all the details yet. We don't have we don't have all that. We, we all we know is that we were greeted and in principle. We're actually having a discussion. We're putting all the details together and it's going to be it may be as many as four or five cities. That will be town halls and education things in which we are talking to the black pastors and black community leaders there about Israel, Israel, both as a biblical and a political issue, uh, not a political issue in terms of we're trying to, uh, I told you before, which party is in power in Israel and that type of thing, or, or even partisan politics here, right? Oh, we're going to tell the truth. Come back to that in one quick second. So we're going to be doing a series of meetings. Unfortunately, Israel, it's been going on for a long time, is used as a political weapon, comes against black pastors, comes against black uh, leaders, and it tries to tell them, it meaning the media, like I told you before, how the media can be, and it's leaning left in that way. It tries to tell you that if you're a good progressive, if you are a good Democrat or whatever, that unfortunately, that's what's happening more and more. You can deny it all you want. Okay. So, so Cure and Ipsy will be planning that. So those of you in the Detroit area, sometime later this spring, we'll be in your area. And then we'll have announcements for other areas that we will be in. So it's not on our website right now. It will be there maybe in the next month or so. So again, we are, we are proud to partner with Cure, uh, uh, just like we were and continue to be with uh, Douglas Leadership Institute. Uh, shout out to the uh, Nelson family. We are still praying for you. We lost our dear brother, Dean Nelson, who was the head of the Douglas Leadership Institute, uh, passed away of, of cancer tragically just a few months ago. Young man. I mean, I, about a year younger than me. I'm 57. I believe he was 55 or 56. Uh, very private, bright, vibrant and very powerful uh, man of God um, and just gone too soon. So we just thank God for his life. Um, but. Um, uh, we were proudly working with uh, uh, a DLI. We're going to be doing that hopefully again too. We want to get reacquainted with the new leadership and everything. But we are uh, working with with Cure or uh, Star Parker again. Uh, we'll be in certain states and certain cities here coming up pretty soon. 
Uh, so stay tuned for that. Again, it's not an official announcement, but just a heads up, right? So we'll be working with them. So if you want to find out more about Cure, I think you can go to curepolicy.org. Is that what it is, Maria? Curepolicy.org. And you can find out more about what Star Parker and their amazing organization uh, does as well. Um, we had our, our our executive, our senior staff had actually planned to be in Israel later on this month. We weren't able to make that happen. There's some things we had to readjust here, uh, but we are. So along with Cure and Star Parker, Ipsy's relationship there, we are also working with Israeli friends um, and uh, we'll be having a special meeting in May uh, with Black American leaders and some of our Israeli friends uh, in New York uh, as we are, Ipsy is joining in with a team of others um, and forging a this new era of Black Jewish, or I should say Israel's, Israel's relationship with the Black community. I had shared before in Louis Farrakhan's Savior's Day speech how he did, he, he, he directly came at Israeli officials who were saying that they were having difficulty with some African-American youth. They were talking about some of the Black Lives Matter stuff, which we said before is an organization that was not what it was a what it was supposed to, what it was appearing as anti-black family, anti-black man, anti-school choice, anti-entrepreneurialism, anti-Israel, none of the stuff that resonates with black folks, the defund the police, none of that. None of that had the support of the broader black American community, but it had the hashtag and the cool sign and that was it, right? So um, um, someone said, we're only a call away if you have an event you'd like for us to participate in. Please. Oh yeah, thank you. That's our, that's our staff out there doing that. I'm reading the wrong thing. So anyway, uh, yeah, they're telling you all that. Absolutely. Just let us know and we can come. Somebody was talking about, we need you out there. We, we do different events in different parts of the country, whether it's in black churches, whether it's synagogues or, or whatever have you. Uh, so you can contact us at IBSI.org and we uh, get more information about that information, about how, how we do that there. So Louis Farrakhan was talking about Israel's reaching out to the black community, right? At a time now, especially more than ever before, it's the longest standing relationship that the Jewish people have in the United States is with black American. I mean, I'm talking about in the fight against hatred and anti-Semitism and, and, and the for real, for real white supremacy, all that kind of, absolutely. Jewish and black folks had each other's back, right? Still do, but unfortunately, it's buried underneath all this other stuff, the anti-Israel stuff, the, you know, supposedly pro-Palestinian stuff that is really just more anti-Israel stuff, right? So so we are working on that um, and we'll be planning. So if it goes according to plan, Ibsi will be a part of two different African-American delegations to Israel this year, right? If it goes according to plan. Uh, that means later on this spring with one and then hopefully in the fall for another one. I won't say more about the fall one just yet, but we are planning that and looking forward to seeing you. Let me let me say this part here before we have to go because I know our time is just about up. I want to say this to our Israeli friends especially. I talked to an Israeli friend earlier today with some stuff we're coordinating and um, I heard it in his voice. It was shortly after the United Nations resolution uh, calling for a ceasefire, which is just a pro-Hamas dictate that's all that is um i i i struggle at times when i'm talking with my israeli friends because on the one hand israelis are very strong just like africans are strong we all out there i got friends of all kind of ethnicities who've been through a lot of different stuff and israel is being isolated like never before they know what that feels like it just it doesn't feel good they know what it feels like so i never want to gloss over that for them we'll be talking about whatever we're talking about but my friend on there, I'm not going to call his name. Um, he was saying, Pastor, we're, we're, um, this is scary. And he told me about what it was, right? You know, one of the things, I'll just be straight up with you. He said that, among other things, he said that we, we knew that the Jewish community in America was for us in principle. But in the midst of this thing, he said, we're not feeling, he said, we're not feeling that support. Now, American Jewish community. I'm not coming at you. I'm saying what he said and what some of my other Israeli friends have said as well, right? The rift between America as a government and the state of Israel is real. By God's grace, it'll be healed, right? But this is not this is not a good time. Go check out what Mark Bilt said about the whole 
solar eclipse and Google Mark built solar eclipse and check it out, folks. I'm not even trying to touch it. I want to say to our Israeli friends, um, we are standing with you. We take the praying for the peace of Jerusalem thing seriously. Um, we know that scripturally that he that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps and we're believing for that. We know, we can only imagine how isolating it feels to see on the media and all this stuff, folks of different ethnicities and different religions and everything, you know, standing with Hamas, unconcerned about hostages, all those other types of things. But just know that there's a lot of people who stand with you, who are praying with you, uh, who who are concerned. Um, I tell people all the time, those of you who've never been there, will go, it's a, Israel, be, amazing place. Amazing, amazing place. Amazing people. Um, and I started to say something about the whole video that we're doing with this other thing, but I don't want to, because our time is already over, but I just want to say again, Israeli friends, we got your back. We're we're praying with you. We're standing with you. And those you know, those in the, oh, what about the Palestinians? You know what? The worst thing that could happen for the Palestinians is for Israel to suffer defeat in this war. Hamas gives two rips about the Palestinian people. They oppress them. They jail them. They torture them. They take their money. Y'all, for if you don't know, you don't know. It's like a wife married to an abusive husband. He Hamas doesn't care. Israel's not only not the problem, Israel's the solution. Israel's what's right in the region, not what's wrong in the region. And for those of you who don't know that, it's it's that go educate yourself. Educate yourself. So Israel, we're we're standing with you. Just like the Arab Israelis are standing with you, and the, and the, the Jews are standing with you. And I mean, you, you have all these different ethnicities that live there and who are coming together. Um, and 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 have each other. So we are praying for you. We are standing with you. So again, come on, one more time. Ready? Happy Purim. Can we get one more Purim thing? Can I get it with the with my friends out there? The Israeli. Really, 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 really. yeah. All right, so again, appreciate you guys. There's other stuff we're supposed to get into. I spent the bulk of the time on the Candace thing because I need to understand. I need the Christians to understand that yes, Jesus is Lord, Christ is King. But don't get pulled into that drama. That drama right there. Be careful. Be careful how you're saying that. When you go to you going to church this Easter, you're going to be doing that. You'll declare it. He's risen. He is risen. But don't get caught on that. I love your passion, your principles, articulate uh, someone. This is Michelle Ben. Thank you for your clarity. Subtlety and influential leadership. I was disturbed and disappointed in Karen. I'm grateful that you publicly raised the key points you did. Yasha Koash, brother, thank you so much, Michelle. Appreciate you as well, ma'am. Absolutely. So we're here every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, right? Uh, it might be me. It's probably gonna be Joshua. It might be Olga. You know, some of the young folks taking the taking the uh, uh, the helm. Again, this is the Institute for Black Solidarity with Israel. You go to ibsi.org, find out more about our organization, about what we do, about our events that are coming up that might be in your area as well. Again, the whole cure thing where we're going to be in Detroit and other cities. You'll know more about that pretty soon. If you want to join our newsletter, go to ibsi.org. Scroll down to the bottom and you'll see there you can just put your name and address or I mean, not your name and address, but your name and your email address there. Right. And you can join our new newsletter in that way. Pastors and ministry leaders, you can join that way as well. You might want to just say on there. I'm a pastor. Right. If you when you, if you join our emailing list, because there's a special section we're going to have for you. This will be part of our MailChimp that we actually use. So we're going to be kind of separating those as well. So we'd love to stay in contact with you in that way. Thank you so much, everybody. I know we went all over the time. But it was great being with you. Uh, might not see you for a little while, but again, kind of give you a shout out as much as we possibly can. Y'all have a great week. Yes, someone on there, all the Christians out there, happy Easter on this Sunday. Go ahead and celebrate. Have a good time. Uh, it's funny, all about Jewish friends. Passover is coming on another month. So it's a great time of spring and celebration. Yes, a lot of bad stuff going on, but you know what? God is still good all the time. He's faithful. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your loved ones. Enjoy your life. And know that the word of God says he gives us life and that more abundantly. Thank you. Another great live session. Thank you so much, Pastor Hall. Love you, ma'am. Appreciate you. we got to connect again. I was just talking to Bishop, um, Pastor uh, 
McDowell about doing an annual thing there around in February. We'll talk about that some more as well, but we'll be keeping you up to date on all this going on as well. Love you all. All right. Appreciate everybody. Y'all have a great week. See you soon.